Okay, physics students, welcome to magnetic field 7, electromagnetism. So we finished now with all, well, partly finished with uh, a lot of the colour and the flavour of uh, magnetic fields, about how it's used and interesting things that relate to magnetic fields. Let's now get down to the nitty gritty stuff um, and the physics that you actually have to understand. So electromagnetism is related to the fact, so we've, we've done just magnetism and magnetic fields due to magnetic substances. Electromagnetism mag relates to the fact that current carrying wires generate a magnetic field around them. And so you've got to have a current in the wire. If there's no current flowing through a wire, there's no magnetic field. Turn off the, the current, the magnetic field disappears. Turn on the current and you have a magnetic field. And it's a circular pattern. And it looks like, uh, so here we have a battery, there's our wire. Now there would be a magnetic field around all this wire but we're just interested in this nice straight piece of wire. And if you put compasses around them, and we'll do this in the lab, um, you'll see, turn on the current, these compasses would all align themselves around a magnetic field uh, that's in this plane here and if we were to represent it this would be the top view and what we're saying here that's the conductor there um, and so we would put an arrow there um, what this X represents is we need a way of showing which way the currents flowing through a wire and if we're just looking through a section of the wire we, we need to know whether it's going uh, what's called into the page or out of the page and so what we like to imagine is a little arrow going through that uh, that circle and if you see the feathers of the arrow that means the arrow is going away from you and this would represent the feathers if you see the arrow head coming towards you we would represent that with a dot and that would be the current towards you so in this case the currents going away from you and we have this circular magnetic field and so the field lines are drawn in a circle with an arrow and we'll learn in a second um, how to determine the direction of these arrows because they could theoretically be going the other way um, and so when we do this on the table the compasses will actually line themselves up to these field lines and that's what we'll see and so just reaffirming that the field lines around the current current wire are circular and concentric and the strength of the field decreases away from the wire and the direction of the field reverses if we reverse the direction of the current in the wire and the strength of the magnetic field is proportional to the magnitude of the current in amps and so we can use what's called the right hand grip rule to determine the magnetic field so we need to know which way it's going clockwise or anti-clockwise and the right hand grip rule is very simple if this is your conductor that you're interested in determining the magnetic field around you grip it so that your this is the wire you grip it so that your your thumb is pointing in the direction of the current now the only confusing thing here that we have to say is that by current we mean conventional current and conventional current flows from positive to negative. That gets confusing because as physicists we know that in a current, um, current is carried by electrons and electrons flow from negative to positive. But because the earliest people that defined direction of current in electric circuits didn't know about electrons this was all happening before electrons they just determined to have a rule that current flows from positive to negative and so that's called conventional current and so we always put our thumb in the direction of conventional current and in 99.9% .9 of uh, the situations we'll look at you'll be told that it's conventional current um, or you just assume that it's conventional current it only becomes a problem when we start looking at charged particles um, and we worry about that when we get to it. So here's our thing, grip it in the direction, there's our diagram, grip it in the direction of the current and our fingers now tell us 
the direction of the magnetic field around the wire. Okay, so this one here, there we've got it there. Now this one here, see the dot, that means the current's coming out of the page, and so we'll be looking at it like this, and we can see that the field lines in this case are going anti-clockwise. Here we have the current, come on, oh, so close. Here we have the current going into the page, and the field lines are all going clockwise. And just another diagram to make sure that you're 100% clear. Now the hardest part for some students is just remembering to use their right hand, basically. Doesn't work with your left hand. It's a right hand grip rule. Okay, and again, more diagrams show the same thing. Pause it and have a look. Make sure you're 100% certain. Now, what happens if it, the current isn't coming directly towards us or directly away from us? What if it's going across the page that we're representing? And here's an example. Here's the current going across the page. How do we draw it? Well, we still use the dots and crosses to represent the arrows, and, but in this case, it's not the current. It's the arrows that correlate to the magnetic field lines. And so here's our wire. We're gripping it like this. Okay, hope that makes sense. I could be pointing completely the wrong direction, but I'm doing it the right way for me. Um, and so we're wrapping our fingers around. And so if my fingers are pointing towards me, they're going to be dots. And if the fingers are pointing away from us, they're going to be crosses. And that's what they've done just, whoops, got my pen upside down, here. Okay, and so we'll, we'll have a lot of practice at doing this. Um, you'll get the hang of it. Now, what are the units for magnetic field? Well, the magnetic field strength, sometimes referred to as magnetic flux density, is measured in a unit called Tesla, with a capital T as the symbol for it. Um, and so you can have five Teslas, that would be five with a capital T after it. And generally given the symbol B in equations. Um, and it's named after a guy called Nikola Tesla, um, who's famous for the Tesla coil um, as well, who passed away in 1943. What did he look like? That's what he looked like. Parting hair was big in those days. And so this is the formula that we would use to work out the magnetic field strength in Teslas. And so there's our B. We've got the current in amps. We've got the radial distance, so how far you are away from the wire in meters, standard units again. And we've got a K. Now this K, unfortunately, it's the same symbol that we've used before in electrostatics, but now we use the constant for magnetics. And you can see that this is a very small number, whereas the other K that we were using was a very big number. Uh, and so make sure that you don't mix up your K's. Another common mistake for students is uh, they just assume the K is the K that they've been using. Got to switch on your brain, recognize that K is just representing a constant. Um, and so you have to know which constant to use. Let's look at an example, fairly complicated one to start with, but uh, if we work our way through it, you should get the idea. Uh, two wires separated by um, distance um, where one's carrying 1.5 amps one's carrying 2.5 amps we want to know the strength of the magnetic field at point x which is uh, 15 centimeters from this one and 10 centimeters from this one so it's a complicated question because the magnetic fields of the two wires will interact and you'll get a the magnetic field at X will be the resultant of the interaction of those two magnetic fields. So the best way to answer this question is of course to divide and conquer. So the first thing is you just imagine that there's wire A, ignore wire B, and you work out the magnetic field due to wire A. Using our formula, putting the numbers in, and we get two times of a 10 to the minus six Teslas into the page. How do we know it's into the page? because we've done our right hand grip rule and we've worked out that it's into the page. 
We then work out the magnetic field strength due to YB and in this case it's going to be out of the page get a different value out of the page again right hand grip rule we've got our fingers pointing towards us and therefore we have out of the page and then we choose that uh, out of the page is positive so we <coughs> we do a vector addition and we end up with the total magnetic field being 3 times by 10 to the minus 6 teslas out of the page okay divide and conquer and just work your way through it. So you should now be able to do questions 11, 13 and 14 in your booklet. And in our next video we're going to look at solenoids and coils or as it says here coils and solenoids. Cheerio!